Intel's GPUs have officially launched and oh, it's not good. Discord also launching on Xbox and oh, it's not good. And uh, the owner of TikTok is making their own chips and I don't know if they're any good. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're going to start off today talking about uh, reviewers coming out with the Intel GPU launch for the ARC A380. Official reviews are out and it's not all bad news. It's it's not terrible. It's not good either, but uh, let me just read you some of the headlines that we've got going on here. Uh, Intel Arc A380 is plagued with software flaws, poor frame rates, and often unplayable. It's like living in the middle of a minefield, has software issues, it's not approved, and it just overall seems to be a gigantic mess of a launch, likely from a lot of software implementation, which was kind of my hesitation when it came to this launch. I talked about my experience with the DG1 GPU and software driver just was the worst part about it. And looking at all the reviews that are out there, it seems to be that's the case. So one of the things that needs to be said about this is number one, it is not necessarily all that bad. It puts up actually some respectable benchmark numbers compared to a 1650 or an RX 6400 when it works properly at its price point and where it's positioned in the games it works well in it works well enough to be justified. In the games it doesn't work well in, it's it's bad, it's really bad. But also there's issues with the fact that you need to turn on resizable bar in order to have any sort of valuable performance gain from it. As you can see here from Gamers Nexus's chart, there's a lot of frame rate inconsistency if you have resizable bar turned off on your setup, which if you're buying a $140 GPU, are you on the latest hardware in order to have access to resizable bar? Probably not. The vast majority of consumers aren't going to be on the latest and greatest if they're purchasing such a low end GPU. But it does appear, at least according to Gamers Nexus and other reports, to be a necessity to have resizable bar. But the gist that is coming out is that when the GPU works well, it is actually really good. When the GPU works poorly, it's, yikes, it's bad. And you just, you need to bear with the fact that Intel is going to have a lot of growing pains as it's launching an entirely new generation of graphics cards. This is not going to be a seamless experience. It's going to be a rough one indeed. So it depends on how much you can stomach, how much you can tolerate. Do you wanna be on the bleeding edge where there's hiccups and things to address and driver failures and stuttering and the fact that these cards don't perform well in anything besides DX12 and Vulcan? That's a big thing I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. But if you're playing on older games, Games. These cards suck, which is just unfortunate. So that is why it's not getting recommended by all of these reviewers out there. We personally didn't get our hands on a review sample, but it's kind of worse than I was expecting. I was expecting low frame rate, not a bad experience. That was kind of, I was thinking bad price to performance, not bad performance. That was my hope with it, that like worst case scenario, Intel is just pricing these improperly, but you can't you can't price out of a fact that it may work with some games and it may not work with others. On top of that, it's being found out that these GPUs do not work with mining. There's no support for any miner right now when it comes to the driver that Intel has for these. Whether that's good or bad, that's for you to decide, but it does appear like the graphics cards don't have full support overall. But not only was the A380 benchmark marked by a whole lot of people. Linus Tech Tips had his video showing off the ARC A770, and we got a lot of details from Tom Peterson, a former NVIDIA person, and Ryan Trout discussing some of the details with regards to this and Intel's plan with the ARC Alchemist lineup. So some of the things that they talked about were really concerning to me. One of the things that they highlighted in the video was the fact that these GPUs suck when it comes to anything besides DX12 and DX11. And in fact, 
fact, you can get up to double the performance just by going to DX12 from DX11. That is not normal graphics card behavior. Usually it's a few FPS, and it's not the fact that DX12 runs so much better, it's that DX11 runs so much worse. But as you can see here from the Steam chart, the vast majority of the world's most popular games at this moment are not DX12 or Vulcan. They are either DX9 and DX11 or potentially DX10 if you include Grand Theft Auto, but the most popular games are not running on the latest API. So this is gonna be an uphill battle for Intel to climb with these graphics cards. And so one of the things that Intel mentions in Linus Tech Tips videos is the fact that they are not going to be pricing their graphics cards according to their tier one performance. That is the games that the GPU performs best in, but rather they're going to be pricing it according to their tier three performance, which is not the games that it performs all right in, but the games that it performs poorly in. They're going to be charging, according to them, without them actually disclosing what the price is, they're going to be charging, hey, our GPU sucks at these games, so we're gonna charge you the price for sucking at these games. But according to Intel, that should kill everybody in the tier one gaming experience. So if you are playing DX12 and Vulcan games, you should get the best price to performance with Intel according to Intel, which the fact that they're not revealing prices right now of the rest of their lineup, but also making these bold statements on Linus's videos doesn't necessarily inspire a ton of confidence. We were supposed to get these cards earlier this year. So, and we're also kind of anticipating that they're gonna come out in the next few months. And the fact that they're not willing to disclose the price right now is very concerning. Either they're waiting for plays by AMD and Nvidia for their next generation or they actually aren't gonna keep up to that. And so they're just saying these marketing words and we're not gonna actually get really good price to performance because we did have that leak a few days ago, which showed that it wasn't gonna be good price to performance. It was gonna be kind of expensive and they're gonna be kind of hot and loud, which Linus's video backed up a little bit, not the loud portion, but definitely consuming more power than the other GPUs. Actually, that was Gamers Nexus's video showing the power consumption was elevated on Intel's GPU. So overall, summing it up, Intel's GPUs, a whack experience and it's you're gonna have to deal with some growing pains but it's not all bad when it's good it's really good when it's bad you might as well not even be playing sometimes depends on the game it's oof. do these details inspire confidence are you looking to get an intel gpu are you looking to not get an intel gpu what do they have to do to win you over let's say the arc a770 is competing directly against the 3060 ti what price does it have to be at for you to endure frame rate stutters, for you to be able to have to be on resizable bar hardware, for you to have to deal with some growing pains and to not have great performance on DX9 through DX11 games? What price point makes sense for you? Let me know down below in the comments. But let's talk about the price point of crypto stonks. Not much moving in the crypto market. Bitcoin up only half a percent to be at 23,635. Ethereum down roughly 1% to be at 1551. It does seem like the surge that was happening over the past few days was with regards to the fact that we're expecting the Ethereum merge of proof of stake and proof of work to finally happen. Whether or not it does is anybody's guess. Dogecoin is up 2% to be at just over 7 cents for the moment. Now, let's pass it on to Reese. What you got for us, buddy? Absolutely. In case you want to use any of those UFD deals, I don't know what they are. Reese doesn't tell me these things ahead of time. You could potentially do it with Spider-Man Remastered, which is coming to PC on August 12th. And now we have more details about the required specifications for it, as well as the feature sets that it is going to support. So in case you want minimum performance, you're going to need something like a GTX 950 and an i3-4160 with only 8 gigs of RAM. It's pretty good for a low-end setup. For the recommended specs, you're looking at a 1060 or 580 with an i5-4060. 670 or a Ryzen 5 1600 with 16 gigs of RAM. That also makes a lot of sense. That's like a PlayStation 4 setup, which is exactly where this game came out. And then in case you want the highest end stuff, you're looking at a high class RTX 30 series card or an RX 6000 series card with 32 gigs of RAM and a high end processor. That all makes sense. This actually seems pretty good. They're also gonna be coming out with support for Nvidia's DLSS so that you can use the tensor cores for faster frame rates as well as Nvidia's deep learning anti-aliasing as well as ultra wide support. No 
support as far as I'm aware on FSR being supported in this game just yet. The fact that God of War does support it uh, makes me somewhat hopeful that it might happen. It, uh, it depends. I don't know how good the port on this is obviously going to be, so we'll have to wait to see how that's going to happen. And in case you've been waiting to see how you could potentially implement Dolly 2 into all of the things you're doing, well, you might not have to wait any longer because they are now opening it up for a million people who have been on the wait list to now get access to Dolly 2 with the beta officially opening up. You're going to get 50 free image credits in your first month and 15 credits every month after that, which each credit, once you give it a prompt, it'll give you four images. So that's what you get. And then in case you want more credits, 115 credits will be about $15 so that you can use it for all of that. Also, the beta is expanding it so that these items can be used in commercial projects. So now start to expect to see a whole bunch of actual AI generated stuff out in the open. There's been that Dolly mini craze that's been going around with like some horrifying stuff that's not based on Dolly 2 as far as I'm aware. Dolly 2 does seem to be a lot better. And so we might we might start to see some really surrealistic, realistic stuff out there. And if you want to realistically, surrealistically talk to your friends on Xbox via Discord, well, now you're going to kind of be able to. It's a little complicated. So this feature is now going to be available to Xbox insiders right now with you being able to use Discord to talk to people while you're on your Xbox. And it should be rolling out to the rest of Xbox people later this year. But it's a little complicated. So number one, you need to connect your Xbox account to Discord and then you have to give it permissions for your voice stuff. Even if you've already connected your Xbox account to Discord, you gotta redo the permissions. And then you need to connect your account with the connections menu with the Xbox to the Discord. And then after that, you need the Xbox mobile app on your phone. And then when you go to Discord, you'll click join on Xbox button, which will automatically open the Xbox app on your phone. And then you'll say that forward it to the Discord for the Xbox thing. It's complicated. It's not a simple setup. This is not going to be seamless integration at the moment, which is likely why Microsoft is probably putting this only out to Xbox Insiders beta so that it can be more seamless and kind of auto done instead of a 16 step process in order to just talk to people, which whatever happened to the days of playing video games anonymously. Kyler, when did when did shouting at people in video games become popular? Modern Warfare 2. Well, you know, it's too modern for me, okay? I prefer pre-modern warfare. Like World of War? Yeah, that. Actually, that came out after the first Modern Warfare. We'll, we'll, we'll work on it. We'll work on it? Yeah. Well, you know what ByteDance is working on? That wasn't asking you. That's asking the audience, Kyler. They're working on their own SOCs. In case you're wondering who ByteDance is, they're the parent company of TikTok. That's right, TikTok chips coming to somewhere near you, likely for their server so that they can actually accelerate all of their own stuff. This is not necessarily unprecedented for large corporations to start designing their own SOCs. It's just kind of interesting that the parent company of ByteDance is gonna be moving forward with it. Amazon's doing it, Facebook's doing it, a whole bunch of large companies designing their own SOCs for their server stuff. Now, this is the latest to join on that list. And I'm gonna join on the list of the people who don't film hot news for at least a few hours, just like the rest of you. And But then I'll be back for more hot news tomorrow. Hopefully, as long as there's news.